OK, well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, our next uh, report out. Good to see uh, people on the call. A uh, couple of really uh, great uh, presentations to look forward to. Uh, Shabana is going to give us a 60 day report out on uh, the work in children's phlebotomy and then James uh, improving meals for older, the meal service for older adults. So uh, in the true um, spirit, let's go straight to Shabana on the call. Over to you, Shabana, to give us uh, your reflections. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Shabana Nijabar and I'm a phlebotomy supervisor at the LGI. My role in this project was process owner. In September, phlebotomy took part in a rapid process improvement workshop, which involved collaboration with staff from children's help patients, play leaders and our own phlebotomists. We had great impro improvements from the RPIW and now I'm here to present the remeasures at 60 days. This is our project form on screen and our aim was to improve patient experience in children's phlebotomy. Phlebotomy offers a ward service and an outpatient service, but this project was focused on patient experience in outpatients. We have high demand from clinics and GPs, which has led to long waiting times, mental and physical pressure on staff and negative experience and negative feedback from patients. One of the PDSA cycles we started during the RPIW was to have one phlebotomist working alone with assistance from staff in children's outpatients. For the last few years, we have always had two phlebotomists with every patient, so the phlebotomists were challenged to overcome this mental valley and challenged to improve their skill set. The PDSA cycle was held on Monday and Thursday mornings and was restricted to patients from the liver and renal clinic. This group of patients have time-sensitive blood samples to collect due to the medication they take, and some are isolating because they are immunosuppressed so there was an expectation that they would be better protected if they remained in clinic and the phlebotomists approached them as opposed to them being highly exposed in a busy outpatient area within the phlebotomy department. As you can see from the pie chart, in the month of October, the highest demand of patients was from clinic patients and the trial clinic did not have a significant impact as a total. However, if you look at the 26th of October, which was a trial clinic day and approximately 30 days following the RPIW, the number of patients seen in the trial clinic was equal to the number of GP patients that entered the department all day. This shows that almost a third of the total demand has been completed in the morning. And it's important to remember that the trial clinics are only held in the mornings until 12 noon. And this level of demand has been a regular theme that we've seen on the trial clinic. This is our target progress report. Before the project, our lead time, which measured the time from a patient entering the corridor in phlebotomy to the patient leaving the department after sample collection, was 52 minutes. Our sponsor, Claire Woodrow, set us the target of a lead time of 20 minutes, which we managed to achieve during the RPIW. Unfortunately, we weren't able to collect the remeasures for the 30-day mark due to unforeseen circumstances. But at the 60-day mark, we found that the lead time for the patients in the trial clinic was an average of 10 minutes, but this did not include the time the patients had waited in children's outpatients before the phlebotomists called them in. We found that the standard process in phlebotomy was an average of 39 minutes, which was a 26% of change from before the project began. We also found that we had a lead time of 31 minutes when we had a, a more experienced phlebotomy team, but this returned to the baseline of 50 minutes when we had a less experienced phlebotomy team in the standard process. The working process, which was the number of patients waiting in the process at one time and includes the patient in the phlebotomy room, was five patients, which was less than half of patients waiting than before the project began. This figure remained the same with experienced and less experienced phlebotomists and indicates an opportunity for training because we had the less experienced phlebotomists working in the standard process on a trial clinic day. It shows that the level of experience does not influence the number of patients waiting on a trial clinic day. The standard working process is the health of the process, and with 25% of change, it shows that the process is working as expected. In regards to the quality defect data on patients leaving, we found that the percentage of patients leaving without having a blood test was 7%, which was less than half of patients leaving before the project began. We've witnessed a behaviour change in the patients using the service because overall we have even demand throughout the days 
aside from a few anomalies, which has led to pa less patients leaving without a blood test due to the weight. Unfortunately, the responses received from the patient feedback, the service quality defects is in the standard process has been negative or neutral, which is more than the baseline. In contrast, the patient feedback from the trial clinics was very positive with comments such as quick and friendly staff, easier to wait in one area and so on. This shows that we have been successful in improving patient experience for the patients in the trial clinic and we need to focus on the reasons why the remaining patients in the standard process have had such a negative experience. Finally, we have the staff feedback from the home team, which has not been as positive as expected with comments related to staffing levels, for example, more staff and unsupported. The unsupported comments have been related to difficulty obtaining support in children's outpatients due to staffing shortages in children's outpatients. However, most comments from staff that have worked in the trial clinics have been positive because they've been pleasantly surprised that the request to run a clinic alone was within their skill set. It has been difficult to overcome the mindset that there doesn't always need to be two phlebotomists with each patient. And this has been difficult to show in the data. However, following encouragement and support from management, the team have been willing to try. The team recorded timings when they received support from staff in children's outpatients. And though they received the support when required, it's put pressure on the staff in children's outpatients when they have staffing shortages. So the phlebotomy staff have been asked to bleed phlebotomy management when required. This is a concern that will require further discussions with children's outpatients. We've also had staff absences and stuff, some staff leave for other sites due to varying circumstances, which has led to low morale within the department because many of these staff were highly experienced working in children's phlebotomy. We hope to focus on this in our next steps. For our next steps, we would like to focus on the paediatric training because if we have a fully trained workforce, we can support staff that feel they are not receiving the help required and also support staff that may feel they are underqualified to work alone. We would also have a better, better flow of patients with more quality, qualified staff within the trial clinics. The trial clinic days are also a great opportunity for training because most of the demand is re removed from the standard process in phlebotomy. Therefore, from Monday 20th November, we will be working with our clinical edge care, Sarah Endicott, to continue the paediatric training, which would allow the supervisors at the LGI to roll out the paediatric phlebotomy training to the whole team. We would also like to continue the current PDSA cycle in children's outpatients. If we were to extend the trial clinics to other days and other clinics, we would need to reassess the patient demand. Overall, though we haven't had the lack the levels of improvement we were expecting from the RPIW, we have had small improvements, which we hope will lead to bigger and long term improvements in the future. Thank you for your time. Brilliant. Thanks, Shabana. That was a really great presentation. So well done for that. And I also really like the honesty in your presentation because, uh, you know, sometimes um, you can feel that this just has to be a kind of positive pitch. So I think, you know, those real challenges that you faced and some of the feedback is really important in the learning about how we go about this and how we engage colleagues in thinking about change and taking them with us rather than it feeling um, difficult. So um, so thank you for that. That's really, really, really good. Thank you. And I can see lots of claps and thumbs coming through the teams as well. So well done. Well done. Right. So thank as you. we normally do, we will uh, take questions at the end. Um, so if we could move on to James, who I can see is on the call with us uh, to give us the, an update around the uh, inpatient meal service for all, older adults. James. Hello. So uh, my name is James Boroughclough and I am the um, senior charge nurse on J15, which is an older adult ward within SIM. Um, so I'm coming uh, to speak to you today about uh, an, actually an upcoming um as an event that we've got planned um so the purpose of this presentation is really to give you the story of how we brought this to to a kaizen event um so it's around improving inpatient meal service for older adults so uh this really the story started probably about a year ago uh, so j15 is a mixed sex older adult um ward um it was one of the first wards in sim to function as a covid ward from february 2020 <clears throat> and and 
throughout the pandemic, we had um, various changes uh, to the function of the ward to being um, a COVID isolation ward, to being a, a acute admissions unit. Um, and then uh, around this time last year, we went back to our normal function, which is just uh, an, an older adult medical ward. Um, so the team went, underwent a lot of continuous change during this time, um, and we experienced quite a lot of demotivation and low morale. Um, mainly, main themes that came up from that was around loss of control, feeling demotivated, feeling stressed, and um, some disengagement from the team. So I consulted with the um, Trust Clinical Psychology team and asked them to um, to do some work with me. So from the conversations that I've had with them, uh, one of the things that we came up with was to arrange an away day for the team. So we felt very much from COVID that coming to work was often seen as like a, a social thing um, during COVID when a lot of people had no social interaction. So then when that changed, people went back to their normal lives and disengaged from work a little bit. Um, so the idea was to do something together that was centred around work, um, but not within the work environment. So we came up with an agenda for the away days and, and things that we thought were really important that we wanted to include in that. Um, and there were some things around, you know, reward for staff for the work that they'd done. So we provided lunch. Um, mm -hmm. We had a session from the staff support psychology service um around dealing with stress and things like that um and some team games we did like an escape room experience so we had a uh, like a board game um which had like escape rooms in an envelope so they split them into teams and they had to work like that uh, but one thing i really wanted to to make a part of it was which was around decisions being made obviously because of the pandemic that staff sometimes didn't feel they were involved with the changes that were made and they were coming and going quite quickly. So I wanted to improve, I wanted to incorporate the Leeds Improvement Method somehow. So we came up with the idea of, of doing something similar to the game show The Apprentice. So we would split the, the uh, staff into teams and they would come up with something that they all within their team felt that they wanted to change about the ward. Um, and come up with a project plan, uh, which they would then pitch to myself and the junior sisters, and we would decide uh, a winner, basically. Um, and we had some support from the KPO team in doing that. Um, and the idea was that they would then support us to roll out the projects. So the we ran the days in, in March last year, um, and sort of the feedback that we got back from the days was really positive. So 60% um, of the staff uh, said, rated the uh, the event to be excellent, 24% very good and 16% good. So we had no negative feedback from the days at all. Um, and as you can see uh, from, the, from the bar chart, uh, the majority of the team felt that the day would help to us team, uh, team building, raising morale, improving team communication and service improvement projects as well. Um, and 92% of the team felt that it would have a pos positive impact on service improvement and team working. Um, so positive impact from the, for, so the positive impact that we got from the days themselves was a better in interpersonal relationships at work and uh, staff were more eager to socialise out of work. Uh, there was better integration of new starters, so uh, people that had joined the team, because we felt that staff had tended to stick with people that they knew to sort of reinforce the self of safety. But we felt like after these days, people seemed to be a lot more open to working together. Um, team members coming up with new ideas of how to prove things proactively rather than being asked. Um, and that had an overall better impact on our KPI, KPI scores such as uh, monthly metrics, a friends and family test, uh, and on our compassion audit as well. Um, we had a more positive working environment, uh, and we actually also noticed a reduction in sickness levels. 
Um, and there are just some um, little examples of things that, that people had said. So it, uh, it was good to meet people outside of work and, and the psychologist was interesting. Also, the Leeds Improvement Method was very interesting and they seemed interested in what we had to say and enjoyed the whole day. Another one, so good thing about the event is that it helps you to see work from a different perspective and help to improve you as an individual and the staff. So the general consensus is we got an overall better idea of how to work together and how to improve our service as one. Like I said, the, the away days ran over two sessions because obviously we, we have got quite a large team so and, and, and we offer frontline service. So we had to make sure that we could cover the ward with the other ones. Uh, but we everybody in the team had the opportunity to attend um, the Leeds improvement sessions. The team came up with several service improvement plans uh, in the style of, like I said before, the apprentice. Um, and these were all on issues that they all agreed that they wanted to change on the ward. Each team um, appointed a project manager, uh, which was either a band five nurse or a CSW. Um, so all the ideas came purely from uh, the frontline staff and myself and the junior sisters, we provided just really advice and, and sort of supervising what were going on. So one winning project from each day it was then selected um, to be implemented on the ward. So the two uh, winning projects, well, one was around improving meal service on the ward and one was around, uh, I mean, it was quite a complicated one, so it was difficult to give a title, but it was it was sort of part um improving how we manage our stock um and how we manage sort of patients own things and how we get them into hospital uh, and how we then utilize them to uh, promote independence and dignity so following on from that uh, then in september 2023 with the help of the kpo team we arranged a day to um explore these uh, project plans on the ward so we used an NDT approach. We involved relevant parties in the things that we wanted to improve. So um, facilities staff were involved, um, store staff, the dietitians, um, and the lead nurse for older people um, was involved in the day as well. We found during the day that the project around independence and, and improve, improving independence and dignity and the stock levels was something that we re could really it was really very specific to, to our ward and something that we could really do within that. But we found from the meal service, uh, there was a lot of interest from facilities and dietetics. And we felt that we could expand on that sort of beyond just this day and this project. Um, so in the weeks following uh, the project day, with the help of the KPO team, we began data collection uh, and uh, observed meal service um, to take the project forward. Uh, I myself became involved um, in the Nutrition Mission Initiative um, and within that, um, again, there was interest in what we'd done on, on 15 and how we could implement that further. Uh, and that's just a couple of pictures from the day that we, that, that we did in September. So um, that brings me to where we are today. So um, going on from today on the 6th and 7th of December, um, we will be running a um a kaizen event um and it's sort of sits in line with nutrition mission so sarah keo is very supportive of it um and we've got um colleagues from facilities um involved in this dietitians again um and what we're looking at is looking at a way to improve meal service that can be then expanded um, beyond our ward and maybe looking at a way that we can benefit patients um, trust wide really to look for a model that we can sort of use for want of a better word. So I will be back to report out in about three weeks, three, four weeks time um, on what happens on that day. But I wanted to share it because I think I think what we've done is a really good example of how we can how we can start ideas that come really from from ward staff or from you know departmental staff um and build using the leads improvement method to make something that benefits not just that area but potentially benefit the wider organization so thank you for your time
Brilliant. Thank you very much, James. I think that's been that's really excellent, actually. And um, along with Shabana's presentation, actually really speaks to some of our annual commitments this year. So I'm sure we'll, we'll perhaps come back to, to, to that. But the impact for staff, I think, was really encouraging. So um, let's open it out for questions then, perhaps while people are thinking about it. James, you, you mentioned about staff sickness that, that this was a benefit for. Have you seen it? I mean, it's obviously a bit early days, but have you seen any sense of um, staff turnover or, um, you know, the kind of retention issue that uh, is is one of our commitments this year? So genu generally, our, our staff retention on 15 is quite good. Um, right. So I think... You know, when I when I felt a a sense of there was something wrong in the team, I wanted to nip that in the bud quite early, which is why I yeah. I reached yeah. out to the to the trust psychologist in the first instant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think generally, generally, if we have people that leave, they usually leave for for personal reasons that we can't really yeah. influence, and also um, career progression. Um, so I can't really say on that, but I mean, definitely in terms of sickness following that, we noticed a lot of our sickness levels did um, did come down quite rapidly after we'd done the, the service, in, uh, the service improvement, the um, away days. Yeah, yeah. And of course, the, the knock on benefits for that for the team and for uh, for continuity as well as the financial benefit from agency and bank, etc. So, yeah, great. Jimmy. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Shabana. Thanks, James. Really uh, interesting work. Phil, you commented, and I just want to reinforce it. Um, kudos to Shabana for coming here and sharing the true story of, of her event, uh, the challenges and the rewards that, you know, not to not to play on the negatives, but I think we don't hear that perhaps enough in some of the stuff because that's where the learning is often. Um, so thank you for, for your honesty. Uh, and I know the team KPO will support you as best as they can as you do try and navigate some of those difficulties and then scale it up because the other bit there is really positive about where you've been able to implement and sustain that test of change in those clinics. There is demonstrable difference both for the, the patients in there. So yeah, well done and thank you very much for your perseverance. Um, Shimana's energy on this, everyone has been a really, really important. Uh, and it's, it's difficult work sometimes. So uh, full credit to you. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you back and reporting out. Uh, we missed you at 30 days. So it's, it's really good. Thank you. Uh, and James, we don't perhaps hear the background on some of this stuff often enough. Really grateful. I don't think we bring things before they've happened for KPO much. You know, we'll come and tell you when we've done something. So hearing the background, the context, the, the really hard work you've done with your team to kind of prepare the people in this space to have then that idea generation. Um, Fantastic. So, yeah, thank you. And I know you've both got support from members of our team, uh, Katie, Catherine, Rachel, respectively, on this stuff. So just want to acknowledge the effort. Thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. Um, uh, anybody else uh, wanting to come in with any uh, comments or questions for Shabana or James? Jackie? Yeah, it was just a comment. And I think it's really um, reassuring that we're looking at things like the nutrition and then that's gone on to be a, a, a big a big tree from a small acorn. So the nutrition mission now and the, how you've participated in that and the influence that you've had over developing that much wider organisational context, which you alluded to, because like you say, you're not the only person. Part of the reason here is sharing these things. You're not the only one going through um, the same concern. So I was really, I've written down nutrition mission and then you said it. So great stuff. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jackie. And I think why I was struck by both both of your presentations, actually, these, these are areas which can, can sometimes be seen as a little bit peripheral, um, but actually we know how important um, you know, for, in, in your case, Shabana, how important giving children and carers a good experience about something that's inherently unpleasant there's no way you can make it a pleasant experience in that sense because it's it's just a difficult medical procedure in that sense isn't it but I think really important to focus on that and hearing the voice of the team uh, from both you Shabana and James I think is really powerful and really speaks to the engagement piece around Leeds improvement method so um, we're just about at time. I can't see any apologies. I can't see anybody else with a hand up. Um, so now is your chance to shout up if you have got your hand up or you want to come in. 
Um, but otherwise, just again to say a big thank you to Shabana and to James for two really inspiring and people focused and patient focused presentations. So well done. Keep up the good work. And um, thanks for listening and attending. And um, that's the end of uh, report. Out. See you next time.